So, you want to do Let's Play content? Let's visualize how we'll do that. Greetings, Adventures Infinity here, bringing you a Let's Play slash behind the scenes-ish video. And I know some of you in the audience, there are other video creators. I know because I found some of you through my comments. This video is going to be directed towards those of you that are new to this sort of thing and want to know the general idea of how to do like a Let's Play video. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to walk through my usual workflow. Now let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need to understand is this is going to take at least some level of both time and money investment. That said, no amount of money is going to be able to get you the practice in order to improve. For that, you simply need to do it. Now with that said, let's get into my equipment. First thing we're going to need is some way to capture the game that we're playing. For myself, I use the Hop Hog HD PVR2 Gaming Edition Capture Card. And this allows me to record from my console and has separate leads going to both the computer and the display that I want to play it on. And then I use Hop Hog Capture here to be able to record from the console. If I wanted to capture a game directly off of my computer, I tend to use Open Broadcaster, like I'm using here. Ooh, Infinite Corridor. And, if I wanted to add a webcam, uh, I would add my Logitech C920 into the mix. And if I want to add a webcam into the game I'm capturing at the same time, there we go. Open Broadcaster does everything I want in setting up the raw footage. It should also be noted that Open Broadcaster is a open source or free program. And so is this one, Audacity, which is, you, which is what I use for my audio recording for my commentary. Now while Open Broadcaster and my Hophog can both input a microphone and record directly into the source, I prefer actually recording my audio separately so that I can clean it up later. This allows me to remove noise, and make any adjustments I need to do in order to increase the clarity of my commentary. I highly recommend recording your commentary separate so that you can take advantage of these same tools. What I am using to record my commentary with is actually a Blue Yeti Pro. But don't fear, you don't really need a $200 microphone. I just got one because I thought the investment worthwhile. When I first started, I actually used the Corsair Vengeance 2100 wireless headset and this served me well for the longest time I'll admit I did pay a little bit of a premium in order to get wireless but I really liked the mic quality and you can find something to start you out easily for like 30 40 dollars another device I use is this little thing it's actually an HDMI in to an HDMI plus audio out and I use this because my monitor actually does not have separate uh, pass-throughs for audio. So you plug this little thing in here, and then you can plug whatever earphones you want into this thing. And you'll be able to listen to the console being recorded from, say, the Hop Hog without needing to have speakers on set to very quiet. Another reason I actually got that device was because I wanted people to be able to hear the game clearly as we were playing, doing multiplayer Let's Plays, like me and my brother doing Army of Two. And so I also got some of these things. And these are simply 3.5 millimeter jack in to multiple 3.5 millimeter jack out. You can get these at like your local Radio Shack or whatever, or Amazon, wherever you can find them. They're pretty cheap. Radio Shack, when I went there, didn't actually have a 1 to 4, which is what I wanted, so I ended up getting 1 to 2 and 1 to 3 in order to jury rig 4. Another thing that you can look into, if you don't have ways of capturing, say, a handheld system, is looking for a way to emulate that system on your computer in order to record it from there. You can take any game you own and say, run it in Visual Boy Advance if you want to let's play a Game Boy Advance game. Of course, one that you own. 
There are many other such programs like this, like Project 64 or Desmoon for the N64 or DS respectively, and many, many others. If you actually want to capture from something like the 3DS, which doesn't have great emulators out now and you want to capture from the device itself, there are a couple that I've heard of, I haven't used myself personally, but I know there is 3dscapture.com and a vendor named uh, Katsukitty, which I've heard of before. Maybe you can, maybe I'll leave links in the description in order to point you in the right direction. Next, a minor but very important step to me is actually to plan out what you want to be doing in any particular episode. So, that you go into it knowing what you're gonna say, and you can move straight into playing. Greetings everyone, Adventures and Fanny here, and welcome back to more Let's Play RimWorld. Today I wanted to try to... Of course, before you start recording, you're gonna wanna make sure everything is set up properly, and verify that your audio recording program and your video recording is running properly. And any other possible tools you might want, such as a stopwatch, whether you have one physically or one on a program here. This is something I use to keep my episodes concise. And of course, after any recording session, be sure to save all your files in a place that you can remember and that you can easily access in order to easily manage them and verify that you actually captured everything. There is nothing worse than finishing a recording and then realizing you were missing a piece or closing a program without actually saving what you had done. And of course it is after the recording process that I go into my commentary and clean it up. If you want to know the process I use to clean up my audio, I have a link to a very helpful video both annotated and in the description. It is very clear and easy to follow and I highly recommend it. Now it's time to bring everything into your editing program. I myself use Adobe Premiere Pro from the Creative Cloud now, although I understand if you need a free option. One I had used for quite a long time is actually something called Lightworks. It is pretty hard to learn, but it is free. You can only export in 720p max, but if you need something to get you started, I highly recommend it. Like I said, you're going to have to make at least some sort of investment of both time and money in the long run. But to begin with, any sort of practice you can get will help you out tremendously in the end. And then, trim, edit, place your clips, and line everything up until you're satisfied. I like to make sure that my commentary is outputting at a good volume level, dancing somewhere between negative 12 and negative 6 decibels in Adobe Premiere, and that the game is loud enough to hear comfortably without drowning out my commentary. Insert overlays, transitions, and effects as you see fit. And now it's time to export if I don't have anything else I need to add. If I need an end slate or a thumbnail, I create one in Photoshop. A free program I used for a while was actually GIMP 2, and does most of the things that I needed. Though once I got Premiere, Photoshop came with it and I started using that ever since. Nowadays I put my icon in the bottom left corner, and then I try to make the most appealing thumbnail possible to best tease the content. And then I upload. With only 2 megabits per second upload though, it can take sometimes upwards of half a day in order to upload 30 minutes worth of content. But whatever gets the job done, you've got to work with what you got. I often make templates in Notepad to help me get relevant tags and description pieces I use often into serialized content to cut down extensively on tedium, adjusting lines as needed. Schedule a time, give it the thumbnail I made, and have it automatically add to a playlist Set auto-add rules in playlist options, such as title contains RimWorld or Bloodborne episode. I often start uploading before going to work or sleep, and when I return I go in to add spotlight annotations as appropriate. And that's about it. I hope that's helped. I know that sometimes you just need to be able to see a path to the end in order to visualize how to do something, and I hope that this has been able to fulfill that. If you want any more tips and tricks in this area, I've actually created a playlist called Let's Player Academy. If you just go to my channel, go to playlists, it should be near the front, at least at the time of this video. This playlist contains a lot of videos from other creators, there aren't any of my own in there. But there are a bunch of videos that I myself have found useful in helping shape my workflow. 
give it a look, see if you learn anything new. And once again, to the dedicated or even the vaguely interested, I hope this has helped. This is Adventures in Fanny wishing you a good day. Take it easy!